Is everybody in? Is everybody in? The ceremony is about to begin. <laughs> Doesn't sound like you're happy. See, this is good. I heard this on the radio. I think I heard it from my dad before when, like, we were in the car. I love all these songs. I want to hear these all the time. As teenagers, we would embrace the lifestyle and symbols of pop culture. On the flip side, some of our idols died young, leaving us confused and trying to make sense of their early departure. These are your hosts Heather and Amanda and today we catch a glimpse of the so-called 27 Club. Having a didactic and entertainment role, the myth of the hero has its roots in the history of human culture. It's the 21st century and we still enjoy listening stories about heroes or watching them as they act in order to save vulnerable people, fight villains or promote social justice. But, as time goes by, the hero underwent a process of metamorphosis, ones with the evolution of human values and the refinement of tastes. This wasn't always a good thing, if the classical hero was one who made the good prevail and promoted higher values. The romantic hero instead won the center of attention through their capacity of being both an outsider and a sick person, of suffering for love or because of marginalization. Interestingly enough, during the last decades, the myth of the hero developed a rather decadent and controversial branch, which caused us to feel all kinds of different things about it. For instance, the 27 Club includes popular musicians, artists, actors and athletes who have died at age 27, often as a result of drug and alcohol abuse, or violent means such as homicide, suicide, or transportation-related accidents. The deaths of several 27-year-old popular musicians, between 1969 and 1971 led to the belief that deaths are more common at this age. However, statistical studies have failed to find any unusual pattern of musician deaths at this age. A 2011 BMJ study noted instead that young adult musicians have a higher death rate than the rest of the young adult population, concluding, fame may increase the risk of death among musicians, but this risk is not limited to age 27. Nevertheless, an urban myth doesn't need too much scientific evidence to develop, so that a few tormented souls, obviously endowed with artistic talent, have already made up this so-called 27 Club. Among them, there are some of the most prominent names in music history. Jimi Hendrix Janis Joplin Jim Morrison Kurt Cobain Amy Winehouse So why the age of 27? And why so many famous musicians met their untimely end at this particular age? What do you like to hear if somebody comes up after a concert? What kind of compliment do you like? I don't know. I don't really live on compliments. Matter of fact, it has a way of distracting me. And a whole lot of other musicians and artists that are out there today, you know, they hear all these compliments, they say, wow, it must have been really great. So they get fat and satisfied and they get lost and they forget about the actual talent that they have and they start living into another world, you know. A psychological approach would take into account the fact that around the age of 25, people pass from one stage of development to another. 
from the prolonged adolescence to the stage of full-blown young adult. At stake is the formation of young adult skills, taking responsibility for our lives and leaving behind the adolescent's frustration, protest, anger, and angst. As opposed to adolescence, young adulthood implies adapting to work and family challenges, attending to and giving education to our own children, leaving behind the adolescent's concerns like studying, friendship and having fun. If these are the traits of this particular stage of individual development, we should also speak about the social aspects involved. Therefore, the 27 Club started to take form in a time when youth seemed to have fallen in love with the lifestyle comprehensively defined through the phrase, sex, drugs and rock and roll. In the 60s and the 70s, young people valued peace, sexual freedom and, of course, the drugs. They were concerned with revolutionizing and reinventing society, which disappointed them through senseless war and sterile conservatism, make love, not war. One thing that wasn't completely clarified, was the risks and adverse effects of this lifestyle, mainly because they weren't even known, in the first place. The sensations were intense and back in the day, that's what seemed to matter most. Despite her short career and untimely death, Joplin's legacy is still going strong today. What is it you think young people are looking for today? Sincerity and a good time. Are they finding it? I don't know about you, Daddy. <laughs> I'm fine. At least I'm having a good time. As time passed by, Drugs weren't mainstream anymore and people who adopted this lifestyle knowing the end result, must have been called to a destiny of fame and drama. Other than that, given the phenomenon of social learning, proven by the psychologist Albert Bandura, many of these young people may have, as well, wanted to belong to this exclusivist club, so the conspiracy theorists who claim so, may actually be right. Social learning theory proposes that new behaviors can be acquired by observing and imitating others. Learning also occurs through the observation of rewards and punishments, a process known as vicarious reinforcement. When a particular behavior is rewarded regularly, it will most likely persist. So, if you are a young rock star, with a thriving career in godlike charisma, and you have some drug-related problems, you may be tempted by an incredibly challenging rehabilitation process, closely followed by dull career and family duties, but you may be, as well, tempted to write history, enter the exclusivist 27 Club, and join Kurt, Jim, Janice and Jimmy and Heaven's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, whatever that is. What advice would you give to someone who's just starting out or wants to have a musical career? Mm. Just keep practicing and don't give up. Just never give up. Play as often as you can and be really dedicated and try to write good music and don't worry about um, the material ethics that go with music. Closely related. A social phenomenon called copycat suicide has won the attention of social psychologists. In the absence of protective factors, publicized suicide serves as a trigger for the next suicide by a susceptible or suggestible person. This is referred to as suicide contagion. They occasionally spread through a school system, through a community, or in terms of a celebrity suicide wave, nationally. As Murphy's Law says, left to themselves, things always go from bad to worse. It still remains unclear how deliberate these choices really are. Nevertheless, choices can be and often are unconscious, taking the form of self-abandonment and powerful temptations that one gives into. The 27 Club myth is in fact, a version of a much older one. 
often erroneous. One of the most popularly held beliefs about artists is that they are messy. Moreover, it is sometimes believed that they actually need to be disorganized in order to squeeze the maximum amount of creative mojo they can out of their unkempt brains. But while there is a lot of truth that the creative process itself could be called messy, one thing should always be remembered. The mess doesn't have to be within the artist. In fact, you could make the case that the opposite is true. Organized artists who keep a clean workspace, as well as a clean thought process, are in a better position to create better work and create more of it. We hope this video presentation has been an opportunity to learn more about the birth, life, and death of urban myths and the way they could influence our own choices. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, don't forget to be the best version of yourself. What do you think you're trying to prove? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to prove that I'm a real musician. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm proving that I'm a real musician.